first of all, we are continuing our demand on the district attorney. He is the people's district attorney. And we're demanding that since the people pay taxes for him to represent the people in this state, we want a grand jury and panel, and we want him to seek indictments. We think there's evidence that leads for to him seeking indictments. They assured us that the investigation is still they're heavily focused on it. They're saying that they still got to go through witnesses. Our, our attorneys are on the case. They're going to stay on it. We're not letting up on anything. We're going to seek all the forensic information that we need, and they're doing the same thing. But we're saying to our community, keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. We never get anywhere without demonstrations and protests and there have, have to be civil disobedience. That's the only time we get indictments. And then even if we don't get an indictment, we're gonna keep the pressure on and go to the U.S. attorney for a violation of his civil rights to move about peacefully in his community. So we're not gonna stop at anything until we get justice in this case. We believe that there's no evidence or eyewitnesses out there that could corroborate what the police are saying. And the fact that we're still out here and it's still under investigation and demonstrations are still going on says that this is a very, very live case. We're gonna keep the pressure on the DA to a panel and grand jury and indictment. Indictments, are you talking about the officers? The officers, absolutely. And they should drop the charges against the demonstrators because they were innocent. There was a peaceful demonstration and they should not be charging demonstrators for peacefully protesting and then letting these killer cops run around here. And we're saying to Commissioner Kelly, these cops should not have been on the force. They already have a track record of having been uh, conjuring up, making up information, false arrest. The city had to pay out of their pockets five times against these two guys. What were they still doing on the force when they were already Five times they had to pay money out of the taxpayer's pocket for these two killer cops. We don't believe that any young man that saw cops pulling out a gun on them would now pull out something and commit suicide. We don't believe that. And we don't believe that if he pulled out his first, that he would not if have shot have if, he, if he had one. We don't even believe he had one. But we just don't believe that it happened the way the police officers say it happened. And we're gonna stay out here and, and be with Miss Gray and the family until we get justice. No, it's just that the community that we come from is like, you know, these police officers, they're white, white supremacists. They have no value for black children's life. They don't know how they get along, they don't know how they get education. They don't know nothing about them. It's never a speech to them like, you know, like a real civilian, like, hello, how you doing? Can I see, can I speak to you for a minute? No, it's never that. It's always just freeze, you know, and you're arrested for no reason. You can't even speak. And that's what they're doing. They're putting white supremacists in black neighborhoods to mm. kill our kids. And I'm speaking today for all the black mothers and all the young kids out there, all the teenagers today, who has a chance to make it past these pits. Kimani didn't have a choice. So today, I'm Kimani's voice. Take white supremacist officers out of black communities. They have no value for their lives. None whatsoever. Thank you. And we also want to say to, to everybody involved, we know some police have a history of planting guns on victims that they unjustifiably kill. And we want that investigated as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman okay. Barron. Well done.